Okay, lighten up. Kaz, man, Daddy, Angela, I appreciate all of that. But, and this probably isn't the right time for it. But have you guys ever heard of Charles Cullen? Is that from Twilight? No. Oh, good call. I was thinking Charles Grodin. What? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> was it? The Cullens are the family from Twilight. Yeah. Ooh. I read all the books. I was very sad during that time. Anyway. <laughs> because you're reading those books. <laughs> and you're an adult. Yeah. Not a proud moment Renesme? in my life. Renesme? 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 Listen, oh. anytime you read a book is a proud moment. Yeah, this Thank is true. Thank you. So this is from uh, Death on the Night Shift by Richard Perez Pena, David Kozinewski, and Jason George from the New York Times. Here's the first paragraph of the story, as I usually like to read the impact line on really cool articles, especially written about these kinds of topics. Charles Cullen. He tried suicide at least three times, did four stents at mental hospitals, broke into a colleague's house, and wanted a doctor prosecuted just for drawing his blood. That's the opening paragraph. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, right. This guy had a really rough childhood. Charles Cullen lost his father when he was just seven months old and was constantly bullied by, by everyone and their uncles, especially by his sister's boyfriends uh, and his schoolmates. And he recalled being as young as nine years old when he uh, when he made the first of multiple suicide attempts. Nine years old oh trying to kill God. himself. Wow. He dropped out of high school after losing his mother to a car crash. Oh. <gasps> And then enlisted in the Navy to try to, you know, get his life back on track. However... Like you do. He was relentlessly bullied in the Navy. And his ineptitude and uh, handling high-stress situations pretty much forced the Navy's hand into discharging him uh, a few years later because of his really, really strange behavior, like dressing in medical scrubs at the helm of Poseidon missiles. Okay. Oh okay. <laughs> Interesting. So instead of his like you know naval uniform, right? And the uh, you know how's your father? How's your mother? Like disciplinary aspect of the navy. Just scrubs. he's back behind the missiles. Like I'm Doctor Missile. He's like, <laughs> 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 oh. yep. Uh, he's yeah. He's playing house with Poseidon missiles dressed as a doctor. You gotta have a hobby. Very specific. It sounds a little strange. At the age of 26, his life seemed to be on the up and up and improving. He graduated from a nursing school and began working at St. Barnabas Medical College in Livingston, New Jersey, where he met his future wife. Right. So, so he was dressing for the job he wanted. Pretty much. Exactly. Okay. Like a superhero. All right. Cool. If you dress as a superhero every day, you're going to be a superhero. Sure. It's, that's fact. Future wife. Everything's fine. He has this brand new profession. He was stationed in the burn unit. That's got to be Ooh, a pretty traumatic yeah, first job. That's yeah. pretty graphic. Because when you're burned enough to go to the hospital, you're burned. Mm-hmm. You know. But stationed in this burn unit, St. Barnabas would be the start of his clandestine killing spree. Um, so this killing spree continued, uh, despite copious warning signs, due to the vastly maladroit stupidity of literally every fucking person who ever met this pile of garbage, Charles Cullen. So... He is stationed in this burn unit and just starts killing people. But he gets Is he killing or letting him die? I will get to that. A little from column A, a little from column B. Ooh. Things start happening. He gets let go from St. Barnabas, and I will get to that later. Right now. But not before. (laughs) Later was way quicker than I thought it would be. Time jumps are awesome. But not before admitting in 1988 to lethally overdosing a patient and admitting to, note this please, killing AIDS patients with hot shots of insulin. What? What? Oh you my can do God, that? Weird making right way. into shock. What the hell? You can do that? That's, that's, so that, that's just that's, mean. That's a bad death. That's, that's not mean. knocking someone out. That's making someone go through hell. That's suffering. That's poisoning their entire bodies like yeah. sepsis. Oh my In 1992, God. the hospital St. Barnabas thought contaminated IV bags were the problem, but concluded it was most likely Charles Cullen. <laughs> See, Is it the bags or the bags bag. or color? <laughs> it gets worse. He was no longer assigned work and left. That's how he left. What? That's why they got rid of him. They just stopped giving him jobs. <laughs> they it's did like not the soft out. Him. Like, they hey guys, not... what am I doing today? And everybody's like, I think. <sighs> Here's the thing, Chuck. Can I call just, you Chuck? They just stopped putting you on the schedule. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have any shifts this week. I don't know what to tell you, man. At the cardiac and intensive care units at Warren Hospital in Phillipsburg. Cullen kills more people, this time choosing to target only the strongest and most able-bodied of warriors. What? 
<laughs> what? Elderly females. Oh, oh God. No. This made it easy to kill. The path of least resistance. These corpses waiting to happen. Trademark. Pre-corpse. Are. What? <laughs> Trademark. By who? Brit. Not us. Are, after all, I'll bleed that out. Not always <laughs> oh, expected not. to live. One patient even told her family a, quote, sneaky male nurse, unquote, <gasps> injected her with something. Ugh. And then that person later became one of his victims. Damn. Oh, man. Wow. So how, at this time in the story, do you think he was able to kill so deftly and with seemingly no end in sight? Uh, the incompetence of the people hiring at hospitals? Yeah, yeah just yeah. bad record keeping, just sloppy security measures. Uh, hospitals are pretty much run like businesses now. They don't really pay attention to well, what's like going on. This guy's turnover really. rate is fantastic. So, He's really efficient. Like, that's yeah. not how he does it. They just turn and burn this guy. Like, if there's someone who knows how to at least like, put an IV in someone, I don't care. Like That's how hospitals are. Like, yeah. You know how to put an IV in? Great. It's really bad. With, like, I ain't saying that because like, nurses yeah. and doctors are amazing. Oh my but like, that's a calling. And I feel like some people get into those jobs that... It's just the money. Yeah. No. That probably shouldn't be yeah. in those jobs. And, we, and anyone that spent time in hospitals, you've met them. You guys nailed <laughs> everything physically about this story, but there's one thing, and we're going to get into that later. So you, you, that's a 99%. You guys nailed it. Yeah. His wife... <laughs> did it! His <laughs> wife <laughs> first noticed troubling signs, such as his penchant of abuse towards the family dogs. Is uh, penchant or penchant? Damn um, it. It's always part of it. As soon as you start harming animals... Just get rid of that person. Yep, he got divorced soon after. We just talked about baby killing and an old lady killing. It's like, the dog killing, hold the dog up now. dog killing, no, that's bad. Hold up now. Yep, he got divorced soon after, so she left him. With his then-wife stating in divorce papers, he routinely zipped up their Yorkshire Terriers <gasps> inside bowling ball bags. What? And she often awoke to the braying howls of the frightened Aww. animals. Oh, Jesus. I was going to say, monster. it sounds kind of funny until, like, you know, do it, like, what, like for a couple you seconds. You do it for, like, a second. Yeah, and then let them yeah, out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just to show them who's boss. <laughs> to see if it goes, they got to learn. They got to rattle, learn. Rattle the birdcage. You can't do that to me, can you? No, you can't. Yeah. No, and you, you hug can't. And then you them and tell them right, you love them and yeah. give them a they forget. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But there's this underlying subconscious of like I would never do this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fortunately, he lost custody of his two young daughters. Good. Fortunately, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah, good. He had daughters. Damn. Exactly. Oh, this guy's a Run. this guy's a fucking animal. In 1993, fucking finally, Cullen was accused of murder. The first such time, maybe a halfway competent detective could have stopped him. He walked into Helen Dean's room, who was not even his patient told her son to scram, Damn. injected her with a drug that no one had ordered or requested, and left. Upon re-entering, Mrs. Dean told her son she was injected, and her son quickly pointed him out to the goddamned hospital staff who nice. did jack Finally. shit. Yep. Oh, no. Mrs. Dean was released the next day looking green, in quotes. <laughs> Good time to release her. They released her. You look terrible. Injected her with, like, Get the Hulk stuff? Yeah. yeah. You match the lawn. Go. You're, you're, you're gonna contaminate everyone. Get out of here. It's a hospital. That afternoon, she succumbed to heart failure. Oh, Jeez. that's horrible. Her son filed a police report believing his mother was murdered by Cullen, mm-hmm. but a simple oversight in the autopsy test was their undoing. They didn't look for... Dijoxin, a commonly prescribed heart medication that is fatal in high doses. Cullen voluntarily left Warren Hospital at the end of 1993. So he doesn't get like, all right, I'll stop. I'll just go one town over. Fine. Yep. He goes one town over. One town yeah. over. <laughs> because the hospitals don't talk to one another. It's the 90s. They're still Bingo connected, Angela. man. That's, Come on. That's the thing. They're like, there's weird private little like bubbles that they live in and no one talks to one another. You gotta that's get on a, a landline. Yeah, there's, there's no lane lines back then, Kaz. It was the no 90s. one. No one asked about any kind of recommendations or references. They're just like, nah, you know how to do needles, great. So he goes to work in Allentown, Pennsylvania, to work at a nursing home, Liberty Nursing. In 1998, a patient, Francis Henry, was rushed from Liberty to Lehigh Valley Hospital, barely alive. Mr. Henry had dangerously low blood sugar levels, so Lehigh Valley demanded to know who at Liberty authorized or administered a potentially lethal dose of insulin. Mm. His M.O. The nurse caring for Mr. Henry. Anyone see where this is going to be going? I don't know. It could go anywhere. This nurse caring for a guy who was dying of a hot shot of insulin repeatedly told supervisors it was not her. But she might know who it was as she saw this dude entering the patient's room numerous times during the night. That man... 
none other than acclaimed playwright Samuel Beckett. Oh, nice. Okay. Yep. I thought so. But the truth is actually nuttier because uh, no one at Liberty did a fucking shit. And then they changed their minds and they fired the nurse instead. <laughs> what? Damn those 90s. 90s. They didn't even ask him. They just fired her. And then it wasn't long before Liberty Nursing changed their minds again and said, come to think of it, he does kind of just walk into a patient's room for Skulk. no reason. He's a skulker. <laughs> Skulks around rooms. <laughs> Juggling, it, juggling it, syringes of with, insulin. People, with syringes in his hand, no shit. People, people who run hospitals have way too easily access to like drugs and stuff. Well, apparently, like, right. Why are they making all these decisions when they have access to all these prescription I medicines? Know. I have no idea. Jeez. One for them, one the guy for, who, like, yes. one for you. Out of the no one knows what's going on. Like, don't bother me. Yeah, with your bureaucracy. Liberty Nursing was like, yeah, he he does go into patients' rooms with syringes in his fucking hands, and they fired him. But then the next stop was Easton Hospital. <laughs> oh. How does he get references? So how did things go with your last job? <laughs> uh, could you go back like twelve jobs, like they when I was eight? Then the last, they're like, oh, you have a nursing degree, great. Come on in. Yeah, it's the nineties. No one else wants to do this. You're already wearing scrubs. Pick up a shift. <laughs> he showed up with scrubs. Hi. After Easton Hospital was part time work back at Lehigh Valley Hospital. He got back at the old <laughs> hospital. Then he moved to <laughs> then, desperate times. Then moving to full time. Oh man! So with benefits from the article, he had gone through seven jobs, had been forced out of three, had survived at least three or four suicide attempts, had endured four psychiatric hospitalizations, and had evaded three investigations into suspicious deaths. Finding work though remained easy. I was gonna say this is the, the moral Isn't of that, the story. Wow. That's fucking yeah. ridiculous. The moral of the story, folks, is you, you're still gonna be able to do it better than this guy, right? Like you can still <laughs> keep your job together. You can like get a different one. Like this guy was able to like jump around from job to job with like the worst credentials of all time, like the most fraudulent like references. Yep. Moral of the story is if you just want to be a serial killer, just work in the health field. Apparently, no one will just know. People yeah. just die and be like, I don't know what happened. Oh. You know, they just kind of died. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Up to this point, Cullen resembled Patrick Bateman from American Psycho, uh -huh. expertly portrayed by the phenomenal Welsh actor Christian Bale. Untouchable. But then, 2002 happened. Worried nurses at St. Luke's Hospital thought Cullen was stealing medication and killing people, hmm. and also stated hmm. that the management, allegedly, and I say that to avoid, you know, potential lawsuits, had a dick-in-hand approach to accusing <laughs> their employees of murder. So, because the management of St. Luke's didn't care people were being murdered, this bag of rotting garbage was simply taken off duty, seemingly validating the fears of his colleagues at the time, and allowed to kill probably as many as 70 more people at oh. St. Luke's. One Just place? at that one place. What? For another year. Jeez. Wow. 70 people in a year? Yep. What the hell? He then moved on to Sacred Heart Hospital hmm. before moving to Somerset Medical Center in Somerville, New, uh, New Jersey in June 2003. It was to be his most prolific chapter in his professional... It hasn't gotten there yet? What? He hadn't even peaked yet? He's just revving up? <laughs> he kept giving lethal shots of digoxin, one after another, sometimes multiple deaths occurring each day, and Cullen kept getting away with it. He would take creative license here. This fucking hospital had more dead bodies going out of it than live ones coming in, and again, that, that, that's me just being... taking creative license there. Imagine just That like, means they're creating like a, dead bodies. It's like a... It's like a fast Damn. food chain. Just, you know, just burgers going out. Um, and... <laughs> A new sense of resolve prevailed after 16 years as a professional nurse, and Charles Cullen was finally apprehended by the state police because oh, people God. started going, okay, this guy's killing a long time, right? From the article, prosecutors kept close watch over Mr. Cullen in the following weeks. Just a close they, watch. As they rounded up the evidence needed to file criminal charges. And then finally, surrounded at a restaurant, Mr. Cullen would soon tell the authorities an astounding story of his 16 years as both caregiver and killer claiming to have fatally poisoned 12 to 15 patients at Somerset, at least half a dozen at St. Luke's, and 10 to 20 at other stops. When he was arrested, Mr. Cullen went quietly. His nursing licenses were in order. He was, in theory, ready to be hired somewhere. So did he ever give reason or what he got out of it or just, no, he just... He had a pretty troubled life. So just killing was something he did. Yeah. I think it's from, uh... Is it Henry Portrait of Serial Killer or just says, killing for me is like breathing for you. Just got to do it all the time. Uh, Fritz, I think.